Well, it's a great Sunday. My name is Martrell, and I want to welcome you to today's service. I believe that God has something special just for you, so I want you to get the family together, and let's get around the TV or the iPad or the laptop, however you're watching, and let's have a great time in the presence of God today. I want to say I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I know I sure did, and we hope that you had one too. I believe that God really wants to speak to us today. Today, we're in part five of what's been an amazing series. It's been our sacrifice series. And today, Bishop's going to be talking about let him have it. So we're going to let him have all of our burdens, all of our worries, all of our cares, because he wants to take those things on and he wants to do incredible things in our lives. So let's cast it on him now. I just believe that even in this moment, God is going to transform our lives in order for his glory to be manifested in the earth. So let's go into prayer right now as we go into this incredible service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you want us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you that you take on the things that we cannot handle and you handle them in magnificent ways. So Father, in this service today, do incredible things for every person that is watching. Meet every person at their point of need. Father, whatever the need may be, whether it be great, whether it be small, Father, I pray that you meet it, Father, even in the immediate, Father. I thank you that you are expediting miracles, that 2020 is not over, God. You still have the final say. So God, we thank you that you your word is the final say, and we believe it, and we trust you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Listen, first-time visitors, put a one in the chat right now. We want to know who you are, where you're watching from, and if you're a regular, go ahead and give us some hearts and click like and share. God's going to do something awesome. I know it's about to happen, and we got about a few seconds, so let's go into it right now. Praise the Lord, Mount Zion family. Come on, praise the Lord wherever you are. Come on, praise the Lord, Mount Zion family. We're going to teach you a song this morning that says, God, you're doing it all over again. He's the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will never change. And so we lift it up, God, that you're doing it all again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Just put your hands together with us. Come on. How many are grateful that he's doing it all over again? Yes, Lord. Listen, you made the blind man see, you made the lame man walk again, you caused the dead to rise, and that's why we dance in liberty, cause you're doing it all again, hey, come on, that's all the song says right there, hey, see, cause you're doing it all again, come right here. The blind man see. You made the blind man see. Make the lame man walk again. He caused the dead to rise. Come on, say that's why we dance in liberty this morning. Hey, because you're doing it all.
is doing it again in your life. If you're grateful that God is doing it again in your life, say, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. God, you've never lost a battle. God, you've never left my side. So God, we bless you. And God, we lift you for doing it again. God, we trust you. Even in a pandemic, God, you've done it before. And we'll do it again, God. So we yield not to you, Jesus. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Well, praise God, he's doing it again and again. I'm thanking God for who he is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We welcome you to the Mount Zion Church right here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III. We're thankful to have you connected. Make no mistake about it, this is not by accident. God has you here for a reason. And let me tell you something. I want you to know on this last Sunday of November, man, the Thanksgiving just passed and you got a lot to thank God for. But I'm telling you people of God, God ain't through. He's not through blessing you. He's got so much more in store for your life and I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to know you're not watching by accident, but God has a word for your life today. So center yourselves. This is worship. This next hour we're sharing together. I want you to make certain all distractions are out of the way. I want you to make sure you're not, you know, letting anything get in your way. Just make sure that, Lord, speak to me. Speak to my heart. That's what he wants to do today. So let's pray. Father, thank you for opening up our hearts, our spirits to receive what you have for our lives. And we thank you because we know today begins one of the most amazing seasons of our lives. So we're open now for what you're going to do. And we thank you for allowing us to be a part of this service today. I pray blessings be upon your people now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you, and I want you to follow me. I'd love to stay connected with you uh, on social media. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3 on Instagram, on Twitter, on Periscope. Follow my wife, Dr. Steph Walker, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We want to just stay connected to you, man. It just means a lot to us to get to know you. If you're a first-timer, let me know today that you are a first-time. And after the message today, uh, I want all of you who have been blessed to send me a message. You know how you do it every Sunday. You always send it in my message, my DM, whatever. Just send it and say, Bishop, this is, I thank God for the word. Take a picture of yourself. Let me know where you were watching from. That blesses other folks to know the reach. And we thank God for all who are watching around the world, whether you're watching in Europe, South Africa, all our friends out there. And of course, we thank God for our friends uh, in Australia as well, and those in Canada. We thank God for family all in North America, wherever you're watching, in, in Ohio, and those of you watching in St. Louis, California, New York, Florida, Louisiana, Georgia, Alabama, y'all know everywhere. Basically, everywhere. We thank God Mount Zion is everywhere. And all through our Nashville surrounding areas, we love you. Thank God for all of you that continue to connect with us. And we're grateful to God. Uh, listen, I do want you to be prayerful uh, for the family of one of our, man, most precious, faithful ushers um, who passed away suddenly this week. And she was such a dear woman and Sister Paulette Black. We want to continue to pray for her family. Um, and she greeted everyone at the 7 a.m. service. And many of you who are probably watching now say, oh, my God, I, I remember her because she was just a light. When you walked into Antioch location, she was just that person. And we just thank God. And we'll keep you uh, uh, abreast of uh, arrangements going forward virtually for her. But we want to pray for her family. We want her family to know we love you guys. And we're praying as well. I do want you to remember our office staff is closed. And... Uh, um, over these holidays. We'll be picking back up on Wednesday the 2nd, so make certain that uh, you be aware of that, and uh, we want you to know that. Now, tomorrow night is our thriving partnership. I'm sorry, tomorrow night is our legacy night. I'm sorry. And uh, tomorrow night, I want you to be a part of legacy night, which will be an opportunity uh, for us to honor the lives of those who uh, have gone on. And legacy night is our chance to give folks an opportunity to celebrate their memory. And uh, so you can go to the link on the screen and have the name of your loved one 
uh, even added to the memorial. We, those of you who have already done that, thank you is what I'm saying. Thank you for doing that. And uh, we've gotten those names in already. And, of course, tomorrow night we want you to know you can tune in on, on Facebook, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And also keep in mind this, that uh, we'll be doing a, a, a memorial next year. Once we're able to come back to the physical uh, location, we'll be having a memorial service for all those who passed away in your family and uh, friends. We're just going to do a, a big corporate service and uh, celebrate those lives. So keep that in mind. Uh, of course, this week, our Senior Saints Christmas Zoom is going to happen with the first family. I'm excited about that. So if you're 62 and up, join uh, my family as we do it on th this Thursday at 9 a.m. Wear your Christmas attire. We're going to have a great time with you. It's always fun for us to do that, and we look forward to uh, what, what's going to happen in that area. I do want you to know Mount Zion is partnering with Thriving Financial. Thriving Financial... Uh, is really committed to helping us fulfill the vision that God has given to us. I've shared with you earlier this year that God had given me a vision to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for HBCU students and schools, and this is a great partnership that I want you to be a part of. This is the HBCU Fund Partnership, Mount Zion, and Thriving. That Thriving is going to match $2 for every $1 that you give. And so when you're giving this holiday season, think about a gift for education. It's a critical time now, so you can go and look uh, uh, on uh, our website. When you click the link, you can see it is a joint fund. Uh, so it's through this. You have to give through that particular link that you see right now. And, and if you give to that link, they'll know your amount's on. They're going to match it for every $2 for one. Can you imagine something for a second? Can you imagine something? Can you imagine... If every person, let's just say 10,000 people, said, I'm going to give $5. $5 to help a student go to school. $5. $5. They're going to match it. Can you imagine that? that? And they matched it. They matched it two for one. You gave $5. That's $15. Can you imagine that? If 10,000 people did that, what that would look like? Man, just $5. So even if you're a student and you're like, you know what, I can give $5 to that. So go on, let's make sure that we do this. I believe December, our giving begins in December in this area, and this is our outreach to the community. We're going to give hundreds of thousands of dollars to students. Uh, so we don't want any student, particularly in HBCU students, schools, to not be able to go to school. So this is how we're doing it. Thank you all so much for your support. Um, next Sunday, i got something exciting for you. It's our church anniversary, 154 years. Mount Zion is celebrating church anniversary. We're excited about it. Special guests, special guests on this, Royce Mosley. So I already know you guys cannot wait because I know I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. As we celebrate, you're going to be hearing some amazing, amazing things. And I'll be uh, kicking it off with the series part one called Closure. Uh, the series Closure, you don't want to miss it. And y'all know Royce is so anointed. And we thank God for what's going to happen. Now, also, I got something really nice for you. So starting in December, pay attention. Starting in December, we are moving our services to now 815 and 1115 on all platforms, which means you can watch us on Facebook, you can watch us on the app, you can watch us on YouTube, all at the same time. Any one of those platforms, we want you to know starting this Sunday coming, 815, 11, 15 in the morning. And then, of course, it'll stay up for the rest of the day as it always is. So that'll bless so many of you because now you can tell all your friends, tune in early. You can come and watch it. Those of you watching in Louisiana and Shreveport who watch me at 7 o'clock in the morning, you can get off of that and go right to our service in the morning as well. So listen, I thank God for you guys, and I appreciate all of you so much. So make sure you are tuned in. Don't forget also our baptisms and house blessings. If you desire some of those, reach out to our office. And of course, look forward to our virtual campuses. Uh, we have our virtual campus, the last ones of this year, DMV. If you're in the uh, DMV area, you're not a part of a virtual campus, hey, you got to connect with us. So get that information from my church office. Reach out, OOTB and MTZionNashville.org. We meet on December the 7th at 8 o'clock Eastern, Huntsville, Alabama. If you're watching in my Alabama, 8.30 uh, on December 7th. It's our last one of the year. And then, of course, we're grateful for Atlanta, December the 8th at 8 o'clock 
Eastern. That's on that Tuesday. And of course, Baton Rouge, you know, we'll go back 2021 and we'll connect then. So we thank God for each one of you. So if you want to be a part of one of those groups, make sure you connect. I promise you, uh, these groups are blessings. Now also, remember our last prayer call uh, of the year will be this Tuesday. Our last one of the year will be this Tuesday. Uh, and we try to get a little rest in December. So make sure you're on the prayer call this Tuesday. And also make sure you download my podcast, Next Level Leader, because I know so many of y'all are being blessed. And I got some great things to drop on you on December. It's going to be a blessing in your life. And of course, I'm excited also. I'll be premiering this, this Wednesday Bible study series on the most requested Bible studies. We put together something from the vault to come back and share with you this Wednesday and throughout the month of December. These Bible studies are going to be the best of. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a wonderful time to go back and to see some of these. We're going to be talking about confronting the spirit of anxiety this Wednesday, so you don't want to miss that. And finally, 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 please make sure that you are connected. Virtual connects. Now, first of all, how do I do it? Well, you got to, you got to, you got to sign up. You got to sign up, right? So let me tell you, this Thursday, this Thursday, and then next Thursday, meaning December the 10th, are the last ones of the year. So if you've gone all year long, you're like, Bishop, I hadn't even been on a virtual connect. I hadn't even seen my pastor, talked to my pastor. Here's your chance. Even if you're watching around the world, like, I always want to meet you, Bishop, connect with you. Get on Virtual Connect this Wednesday, this Thursday, rather, this Thursday at 9 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time or the 10th of December, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. That will be it. That'll be it. And we'll be done for the year until 2021. So you got two Thursdays to get it in. And we got room for you. So make sure you do get all those announcements, get our text alerts. If you're not getting our text alerts, get them over the holidays. Make sure you do that. Text Mount Zion to 63975. Make sure you do that. Amen. So I'm thankful to God as we prepare our hearts now to worship God in our giving today. And I know that there are blessed people of God out there watching me right now. So I stand in this sanctuary every week. I've been standing in this sanctuary, y'all, since March. Missing y'all so much. This big old sanctuary. <laughs> and man, this would be my fourth, fifth service of the weekend. And uh, I will not preach one time in an empty sanctuary. It feels like I preached 10 times because the weight of it. But I know that you guys, you keep encouraging me and letting me know that you're there. And it means everything. If you got a chance to watch the Thanksgiving service on Thursday, God gave me a message about the 10 lepers. And all 10 got healed, but only one came back. And I raised the question, are you the one? As we give today our tithe, we give our offering. I want to ask a question. Are you going to be the one? Are you going to be the one to say, Lord, you've been too good to me. You open up doors. I prayed for the blessing to come, and it came. And the nine went on, and that like they forgot. They got amnesia. They act like you didn't do it. But I'm going to be the one that's going to pay my tithe. I'm going to be the one to put you first. I'm not going to go on as if, though, oh, well, it doesn't matter. If you were God enough for me to pray to and ask you to do it, and when you did it, I'm not going to forget. I'm going to put my tithe. 10% of what you give me, I'm going to give back to you. That's how the blessing of the Lord works. Are you the one? Are you a student out there? Are you graduated and now you're watching Mount Zion is blessing you even and now you got the job where you are and you're like, you know what? I should be tithing back to this ministry. Hey, are you the one? Listen, in this season, we got to be different. We got to be who God has called us to be. And I know Black Friday and people are spending money left and right. You're getting gifts for folks and all that, but don't forget to keep God first, y'all. If you learn anything in this pandemic, keep God first. And then your offering. I want you to sow liberally. Let's Let's so liberally put a seed in the ground. I just believe some of you watching right now, God has laid on your heart supernaturally to give in ways that shock you. But trust God, I promise you. If God is telling you to put seed in the ground, it means your harvest is going to be so much greater. So I want to thank God for all of you that continue to give, and I love you so much, and y'all have been amazing. Mount Zion has been so blessed. And this ministry will, will not go under because of people just like you, because this is God's house, and we take care of his house. So listen, what I want you to do, I want you to text to give. If you want to text, here you go. If you're first time watching this, text to give. Screenshot that. You can text to give. Be very intentional about your seed and set that up. Once you set it up one time, it'll automatically help you uh, in the next time. And also, if you want to mail in your offering, men do that every week. Mail it in. Mount Zion uh, Baptist Church, Attention Finance Department, 7594 Old Hickory Boulevard. It's White Creek, Tennessee, 37189. Let's do that. Let's pray right now. Let's believe God for great things to happen. Father, I thank you that you have one. Even if the nine 
got amnesia, won't tithe, won't give, won't support your work. You got one that's watching that says, Lord, we put you first. We give you glory. Thank you for blessing your people to be a blessing. And I pray, God, that in this season there'll be no lack. I pray, God, abundance over their family, over their jobs. I thank you for making a way. Let this offering, let this be one of the greatest manifestations of people's love towards you. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. so forgiving if we confess our sins if we tell him anything we've done he is faithful and just to forgive us we all have asked that question trying to test the waters to see how much we can get away with you can't just take advantage of it man you can't just say well god know my heart god no you can't take advantage of sin we need to be crystal clear that once we are saved we can never lose our salvation which means God doesn't take back what he places over your life. Salvation is a gift. You'll soon find out it isn't the case. As long as you're in the skin, you're going to sin. But you must understand something. That just because we sin doesn't make us bad people. It just makes us human. See, what if we repeat the same sin over and over again? What if each time we feel ashamed, we ask for forgiveness from God, and vow that You'll do better next time. Have you ever done that? I know I have. I, Lord, next time I'll do better. I promise. But we don't. Instead, the cycle repeats itself over and over again. We become more and more discouraged because we're in this cycle of sin and can't figure out how to get out of it. See, we, we start equating how we feel about it. Like, boy, I feel so horrible. I messed up. God ain't going to respond to you based on no feelings. God responds to you based on he's, the fact that he's faithful. That's why Jeremiah says, great is his faithfulness. Hello, Mount Zion. I'm Kimberly Smith. We're here today to lend hand to the Feed Nashville Initiative. This initiative, envisioned by Dr. Jacqueline Mitchell and the National Black Police Association, feeds upwards of 3,000 families a week. We're grateful to be a part of this. We're grateful because of you, we can serve as a sponsor of this initiative as well. We have volunteers who are here weekly dedicating themselves to this initiative. Because of you, all that you sow into the ministry, we can sow into the community. Mount Zion Deacon Ministry is so excited to have been able to support the Feed Nashville Community Initiative this morning where we've delivered food boxes to families in our community. Uh, we started in September and we have delivered through and we will deliver through December of this year. Uh, so again, just so excited to have been a part. Uh, we are blessed to be a blessing and the Deacon Ministry is just excited to, to, to be able to support the initiative. Hey Mount Zion family, have you joined the Mount Zion Ministry Hub yet? All you need is a Facebook account. It is important in this season that we stay connected and we want to stay connected to you. The Hub is the place where you can stay connected to ministry leaders and they can stay connected to you. Join the Mount Zion Ministry Hub on Facebook. Don't miss out. There's so much on the other side. Our text to give procedures have been enhanced too. Sending a text to 267 MTZ Seed will send an actual text message of your gift. First, start a new text message. Sending it to 267 MTZ Seed. That's 267 689 7333. Then, type your giving keyword along with the amount. For example, to tie $20, type Tithes20 in the message box. Available giving keywords are Tithes, Offering, Vision, TV Partner, and Other. That's it. Giving is more simple and easy to manage. family. How many are grateful that our God loves us forever and ever? His love was never ending. It never runs out. And so God, we just thank you for your ever, never ending love this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Right where you are, just lift up your own worship right there. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God's 
senses I'll be committed to you I'll never leave you Nothing in this world could make me walk away No matter what life may bring I'll be by your side No matter what you face You won't be for God's love, if you're grateful that he's never left you, if you're grateful that he's never walked out on you, if you're grateful that his love is never ending, if you're grateful that God will never forsake you, promise you lift up that worship right there and thank the Lord our God for loving you throughout all your mess, throughout all your mess ups. God, we thank you for loving us. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we lift it up, say for real.
you're grateful for his love, lift it up right there. Come lift up your worship right there. Lift up your worship right there. Say forever is a long time. That's how long you love me. That's how long you love me. Forever. Forever is a long time. That's how long you love me. That's how long. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Well, the word of the Lord today, let's get right into it. Father, speak your word. Thank you for allowing us to receive what you have for our lives. And we thank you that today somebody's life is going to change forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. The word of the Lord in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh, strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruit of all your increase, so your barns will be Fill with plenty, and your bats will overflow with new wine. We're talking today about let him have it. You know, letting go can be a statement that all of us have heard before, but can be incredibly difficult. We've all heard this idea of letting go or letting God. The fact is, is that it's easier said than done, because if we were honest, all of us have a little control freak within ourselves. We like to be in control. We like to micromanage our own lives. And in a real sense, many of us will declare we've got a lot already figured out. And more than not, we fail miserably, found ourselves in need of divine intervention and rescue. Whenever we learn to trust God completely, we began to realize that God can do a better job of handling our circumstances than we ever could. Now, intuitively, we know that. We know it, but practically, we're hesitant because it means that we must surrender our will for his will. We must risk our plans that they could be redacted or even removed in order for God's plan to emerge. Are you afraid that God might take your plans and just tear them up and say, it's not really what I had for you. I know you worked hard on that. I know you had it all planned out, but see, I got something else. Maybe you're watching this now, and that's kind of what happened. You invested a lot. You put a lot into the relationship, a lot into the career, a lot into that particular job, and all of a sudden, 2020 happened, and things got rearranged and tore up, and you realize that it really was not in your hands, but it was always in God's hands. See, this is really what sacrifice looks like when you're able to let God have it. When you're able to, to really come to a place in your life where you're able to say, God, I, I'm going to trust you with the affairs of my life. This message is a message that's designed to stretch you. This is one of those messages today that's going to challenge you to get to a place where you understand the power of sacrifice and surrender. Because whatever you're holding on to right now, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's got you stressed out, overwhelmed, all that stuff you're trying to do by yourself. God is like, let me have it. All the nights you're staying up for no apparent reason, God's like, let me have it. All the stuff you got, all the papers you're trying to figure this out and figure that out. And oh, God's like, can you just let me have it? I I I've got plans for you regarding your next career move. I got plans for you regarding your next relationship. I got plans for you regarding your fine. I got plans for you in every area of your life. And the wisdom that we gain from Proverbs is so powerful because Solomon speaks to us in terms of what it really means to be in relationship with God. See, the idea here is that what is the point of being in relationship with God if you do not love God? And if you say you love God, then you must trust God. That's ultimately the message. 
I want to help you understand what that looks like because that means that we must totally depend on God. I want to know that. Do you totally depend upon God? Because what Solomon shares here is complete dependence in every area of our lives, not partial trust. Because see, what happens, we kind of partially trust God. We trust God to heal when we're sick, but we don't trust God to tithe. We trust God to restore a child when they're gone astray. But we don't trust God to restore a marriage or restore a broken relationship. See, when you trust God, you must trust God completely. And so you must love God with your whole heart. Unless there is a love relationship, this won't make sense. That's why Matthew chapter 22 and 37 is so powerful. Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. That it is possible to trust God to this degree when you love him. There could be no trust where there is no love. See, we're asking people to trust God who don't love God. See, the reason why I, I trust God like I do and the reason why I, I live it out in my life because I really do love God. When love is manifested authentically and faithfully, trust then occurs. Because many of us have experienced failed human relationships. We often transfer those same trust issues to our relationships with God. Because people let us down, because we're like, man, I, I invested in people and they, they, they disappointed me. We think that's what God's going to do. We got trust issues. But you got to remember, God is not like man. God is faithful. God is faithful. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If, did he not say it? He is going to do it. You know, I watched my son, Joseph the fourth, and we go swimming. When the weather was good, we go swimming, man, and, you know, he's learning how to swim and he gets in the, in the shallow end. And one thing he loves to do is jump in the pool. He jumps. But what he will not do, he will not jump in the pool unless Dr. Steph and I are standing there to catch him. He got sense. He knows jumping is fine, <laughs> but I need to make sure my parent, I got to make sure my dad is there to catch me, just in case something happens. That's what a two-year-old understands. Let me tell you something. As a child of God, when you trust God, that means you love God, and you know that God's not going to let you go under. God's not, this is a word for somebody, God's not going to let your stuff go under. So you can step out there and you can trust him, because as long as my dad is there, I know I'm in good hands. You see, people of God, not only do we trust him, but you got to trust God when you can't trace God. Here is another level, another dimension of trust. Now, there are moments when I don't even know what God is up to. You ever had those moments in your life and you were like, Lord, now, wait a minute now. <laughs> this, is, this is uncharted territory. I don't, I don't see you. What's happening? Moments when you have more questions than you do answers, and yet you must still trust God. See, there are a few things I've learned in moments like that. Number one, I've learned that God has a reliable record. I've learned that no matter what's happening, I can trust God's record. I know I can depend on what God has already done in my life. I got history with God. So I got a, 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 a whole file of stuff God has done in my life. So if God did it then, he can do it again. Wait a minute. Secondly, God knows what he's doing. He's not some novice at this. I mean, God, 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 God knows what he's doing. He's God. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He knows exactly what he's doing. But wait a minute. But I also understood something else, people of God. I understood this, that God responds to my faith. But I understand that when I have faith, I don't have to see a thing to know that God is moving. Because I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. So when I understand that, that causes me to say, Lord, I may not be able to trace where you are, but I do know I can trust that you are moving in my life and that something is happening. And as a consequence, here is the big deal. The big deal that Solomon shares here, don't miss this, lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Now, what does that look like? Well, I must now trust the direction of God. Because now my ability to trust God and where God is taking me is so powerful because I cannot be wise in my own eyes. Job says that he knows the path that I should take. So it may not make sense to you right now, but I must lean not to my own understanding. See, this is a cognitive shift. 
It suggests that all of my movement is divinely inspired and calculated. I don't make random moves. In this season, don't make sporadic, impulsive, and random moves. They must be calculated. They must be God-led moves. In other words, don't make moves without consulting God. The text says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. What this suggests is that prior to making any decision, consult with God and find out what God would have you to do. That means it doesn't matter how long you have to wait on the answer. I'm not going to move until I hear from God. We often go to people first and we ask them, what do you think I ought to do? But in this season, your destiny is too critical for you to rely on people. You must say, God, I am waiting for you to speak to me. The hymn writer even declared, oh, what needless pains we bear all because we don't take everything to God in prayer. See, think about all of your decisions that you made in the past without consulting God and how you could have saved yourself a lot of heartache had you consulted with God before you took that job or had you consulted with God before you started dating that person or had you consulted with God before you went over your head with that purchase. You got in your mind, I ask God about everything. I, ain't, I don't make a move without asking God. When I even go online, I say, God, should I buy this? Is this going to help me? Is this what you want to do? Want me to do with my finances? Is this the person you want me to connect with? Because in this season, I can't miss it. No planes. Planes don't take off. <laughs> without consulting with the tower. The last thing a plane does before it pulls off the gate, it starts getting downloads and paperwork from the tower. It's a lot of information they're waiting on before they take off. See, a plane is not getting the news from the 5 o'clock news. They're not getting the weather report from the 5 o'clock news. They're getting it from the tower. <laughs> plane is not getting the navigation the report from from some app, they're getting it from the tower because what they understand is that the tower has a better view and governs all the movement of the planes. I want to bless somebody. People of God, whatever you set out to do, at least have enough sense like the plane. The pilot doesn't come back and ask the passengers what route y'all think we ought to take get that from the tower. Whatever you do in this season, consult the tower. <laughs> Before you date a person, consult the tower. Before you take that next job, consult the tower. Before you move in the next dimension, take the tower. Consult the tower. Because you must understand, he knows the way you should take. Can you declare this of your life? God knows the way I should take. He shall direct your path. So when you consult him, God has already factored in things that have never even come into your mind. God, God, God has already factored in stuff that you have no idea about. That's why you ought to let him have it. You got to trust God. See, there are times when you're going down a path that people think you're crazy. But see, God sees farther up the road. I told you a few, a few years ago, and this is a true story, man. We were headed to Atlanta for a conference, driving, team was with me. As we were headed, we saw, man, this, this, uh, uh, my app. I had this app in my phone, right? And I have it plugged in my car. And you know what happened? It told me to get off the interstate. Now, this is a three-hour drive to Atlanta. We're about an hour and a half in. And we got this timed out just right. And the app is telling us, get off the interstate. And I'm sitting there having contemplations. I don't know. I don't know, should I do this? Because, I mean, traffic is flowing so perfectly. I'm having contemplations because I don't see any problem. <laughs> but I begin to think, wait a minute, this app has never failed me. <laughs> All these years, this app has never let me down. So I told the crew, I said, pull over. Let's follow this route. Trust this app. And we got off. And we got on what's called the service road, or you can lose that, we call it the feeder road. <laughs> and we got on the service road, and as we were going down the same way, we were going the same direction, we could see to our right the interstate, 
down beneath us and about two miles going on this detour route, we saw traffic at a standstill. There had been a truck that had turned over and traffic was not moving. And had I not paid attention to what that app had said and followed what I saw, a three-hour trip would have turned into a seven or eight-hour trip. I would have been caught, stuck, unable to move to my destination. Sometimes you've got to trust what the Holy Spirit is telling you. When the Holy Spirit is giving you a detour, you better take it. Because some of you right now, you may say, it don't look like it's that bad. It just don't look like God is trying to tell you, take your exit. Let me detour you around this wreck so you can still make it to your destination. I'm telling you, when you let God lead you, I'm telling you, people of God, it may not make sense when you first do it, but somebody can be a witness. You have seen God move like that. He's ordered your steps. That's why I love God. He says, I order your steps according to my will and my way. I give him glory. And let me tell you something. Trust, people of God, is about being devoted to God. This is why Devotion matters. In this season, your devotion to God means everything. It's all we've gone through. You got to get to a point where you're like, Lord, I am so sold out and committed to you. When I love God, I got to be committed and devoted to God. So you can say you love somebody and not be committed and devoted to them. But when you really love somebody, genuinely and authentically, sincerely, there's a level of commitment and devotion you have. And the Bible says we must honor him. See, we honor God when we do it with our entire lives and our lifestyle. Our finances honor him. Our word honors him. Our service honors him. Our commitment honors him. It is a result of being devoted to God. Watch this. Let this bless you. The more you grow in him, the more you outgrow sin. Let that sink in. The more you grow in him, the more you outgrow sin. He says, depart from it. Your desire for it begins to wane. The things that used to be fun are now, they now irritate you. Things that, that used to just get you excited are now childish games to you. So you can't grow without outgrowing certain things. Now you got to be honest, all of us have had those seasons where we just did some foolish stuff. It was all about our immaturity. The fact is, our maturation process in the Lord allowed us to outgrow some things that now we get this disgusted feeling in our spirit. You ever had that? Come here, let me talk to you. You ever had that disgusted feeling when a blast from your past tries to reach out to you and you're like, Lord, have mercy. Where'd that come from? <laughs> See, the problem is they haven't gotten the memo <laughs> that you're not that person anymore. 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. I'll put it to you this way, true story. I went back home, back to Louisiana a couple years ago to go visit a friend. And everything was the same. The neighborhood looked the same, houses looked the same. I pulled up, house knocked on the door, <laughs> and somebody else came to the door. It scared me. And I asked for my friend, and they said, I'm sorry. They don't live here no more. See, sometimes <laughs> things can look the same. People still think you the same. But they go knocking on your life. You got to tell them, that person don't live here no more. <laughs> that, that, that issue don't live here no more. That fun time don't live here no more. Baby, I've grown that I've, I've grown the foolishness. I've moved to a point in my life that I, I'm in a point in my life where I realize that I'm after better in God. And, and Solomon is helping us understand something. Your entire life gets better when you're in alignment with God. Solomon says your health and every aspect of your life is better when you're obedient to God. See, there's too much at stake to be playing games. He says, it be health to your flesh, strength to your bones. Letting God have it means that you don't have to be stressed out over it again. When you hold on to stuff, it stresses you out. Stress is an underlying factor of many diseases. And I'm not saying all sickness is a result of you disobeying God. I'm not saying that, but I am saying you can prevent a lot of it. 
by doing what God tells you to do and going where God tells you to go. See, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when you do what God tells you to do and honor God with that, man, your life gets better. See, when you keep your mind stayed on him, whoo, you have a peace that passes all understanding. Your mental health gets better. The reason why some people's mental health is all jacked up because you're letting all this crazy stuff come into your, your head space. See, you must understand how to be completely and committed and devoted to God because now your treasure must also be dedicated to God. I want to leave this with you today because if there is any area <laughs> that challenges us, it's this final area. I want everybody to declare this. My treasure is dedicated to God. Can you say it? My treasure is dedicated to God. See, it's the area of our finances. The Bible says, honor the Lord God with your possessions. God is never trying to get something from you. He's always trying to get something to you. And I want you to hear this because when you dedicate your treasure to God, you made the decision to make certain that your financial legacy is on the right path for generations to come. See, God always wants to set you up for generational blessings and generational wealth. And I want you to get this. The thing, the first thing should always be a God thing. The first thing will always be a God thing. Whatever comes into your possession as a child of God should always be dedicated to God first. This is why we tithe. Because the first thing that comes into our hand, we say, God, 10% of it belongs to you. The first thing is always a God thing. You're never there devoted until you get to the point in your life where you say, God, the first thing in my life is always a God thing. See, we give God what belongs to him. And then God turns around and does what he said he's going to do. That's why I thank God. We honor God this way. First check I write is to God. Before I pay my bills, first check I write is to God. See, because Abraham understood that. Isaac understood that and paid time. Jacob understood that. Joseph understood that. There are people watching you, watching me right now that can testify that when you start making God the first thing, that's when God starts opening the windows of heaven and pouring you out of blood. I wish people could understand. It doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. When you honor God first, that's how God turn, turns around and blesses your life. And I want you to get this. When you honor him with your giving, I'm closing, he will honor the way you're living. The text says, your barns shall be filled <laughs> and your vats will overflow with new wine. It's an agricultural society, so I want you to imagine what that looks like. Your barns, your storehouse shall be filled. See, in this season, with all so much going on in the economy, God says, I want you to understand something. Your economy is tied to kingdom. And when you understand this, people of God, you will always understand these three things is that God is your sustained source. That you will not live your life waiting on some resource, but you will know that God sustains you through all the seasons, that God will keep you. There are people watching me right now who can declare that even in the pandemic, that God has sustained you. That even when other people were furloughed, God sustained you. And even those who were furloughed and who were laid off, God kept providing, God kept sustaining. Because if God got to send a raven to feed you, he'll do it. He'll take care of his children. But if you are faithful in your giving and honoring God, God will always take care of you. And child of God, God will stock your supply. Woo! God will keep your stuff there. Man, every time you go and you go into your pantry, every time you go get it, God says, I'm going to make sure you have what you need. I'm going to prophesy this over your life, that God says, I'm going to make sure you have what you need in this season. I'm going to show myself mighty in a pandemic. I am going to show the world that have put their trust in riches of the world, that when kingdom-minded people put God first, they will always have their needs met. And in this season, this holiday season, God says you will have everything you need to get what you need done. And I declare this over your life. God will keep you in a season of surplus. I declare that there will be no lack in, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel God's 
moving in this place today because I declare and decree over your life surplus, surplus is about to hit your house even in a famine surplus is about to hit your house even in a pandemic surplus over this ministry and God has assigned people to bless this ministry God has assigned people to bless your life and people are going to look up and wonder how you do it so well you're going to tell them because I put my trust in God let him have it let him have it now that you let him have it you let him have that issue you let him have that stress you let him have what's first in your life why don't you let him have the biggest praise you got right there in your living room right there in your bedroom right there in your car on your job open up your mouth for the next 20 seconds like you were in this big sanctuary we'd be running right now we'd be giving God your hands right there where you are all over oh God thank you do you know how blessed you are do you know who you are the God's child let him have it God's got you I declare over your life in these next 30 days <laughs> a blessing is going to hit your life that's going to rock your socks off. You just stay faithful to God with your life, with your decisions. You keep trusting ways telling you to go. You keep giving like you're giving. Child to God, I'm declaring it over your life. And right now, right now, you need a relationship with Jesus Christ, salvation at mtzionnashville.org. You want to be a part of this ministry? Salvation at mtzionnashville.org. You want to connect with this church? We can share with you about Jesus. Salvation at mtzionnashville.org. But right now, lift your hands. We declare it right now. We give you more. Come on, right now. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Say the word and I'll Hallelujah. Hold your head up. I want to serve you. Stop letting that stuff stress you out. God's got you. My God. My God. More. So I give you more. So I give you more. Thank you for watching today. And I just felt in my spirit, I, God, I just felt something break in my spirit. Somebody, you needed this word. This was your break the word. And I want you to be a digital disciple. I want you to take this link and I want you to share with at least five people you know who need this word. People that have been despondent and holding on to stuff and stressed out, let them know. Let God have it. Watch how God turns it around for you. And I want you to know, so I want you to let me know. Hit me up on Instagram today. Let me know. As soon as I, after the benediction, I'm going to go. I want to, I love reading your comments and seeing you DM me and let me know. Bishop, I was blessed. And you send, 
places where you're watching that blesses our team to, to go through those and repost them because that means everything you know that we can share your testimony with somebody else. And let me tell you this, finally, child of God, don't you be surprised. Listen to me. Don't you be surprised. The next 30 days, you get a call. Something comes in the mail. God lays it on somebody's heart to blow your mind in Jesus. Because if you're faithful over what God told, that's all I know to be. That's why I've always trusted God to take care of this ministry because I know if we do what God tells us to do, God handles the rest. And I believe a blessing's about to hit your church and I believe a blessing is about to hit you. So I want you to testify when it happens. May the grace of God, may he cover you, may he bless you, may he make his face shine upon you, and may you <laughs> let him have it. In Jesus' name. Love y'all, Mount Zion. Peace. Woo.